Hello and welcome to Design Set Parameters. In this one-part series, we're going to walk you through the main functions found under the Design Set Parameters menu. Before we dive in, let's review what we will be discussing. How to select the preset hoops on your machine. Increasing and decreasing the size of your design. How to rotate your design. How to select a customized angle for your design. How to repeat a design. How to adjust the density of your design. Let's start with part one, how to select the preset hoops on your machine. Start by pressing the design key located on the third row. Once selected, a new screen will appear. On the bottom row, in the second column, select the hoop selection, which is represented by a picture of a baseball cap inside a frame. A list of all the preset hoops on your machine will now display. Your preset hoops are labeled A through G. Your machine comes with hoops A through F, A being the smallest hoop and F being the biggest hoop. Hoop G on your machine is the hoop for the sash frame. The baseball cap option will be for cap embroidery, and other will be used for hoops that are not preset on your machine, such as the 8-in-1 hoop or any other specialty hoop size. In this case, we will be using hoop D. Now select the hoop you will be using. Your machine will now position itself to match the preset hoop you've selected. Let's continue with part two, increasing and decreasing the size of your design. The X and Y axes are represented by the number 100. This means the logo will be embroidered at 100%. You can increase or decrease the logo size by changing the X and Y measurements. When making the change, keep in mind the machine will not increase or decrease the number of stitches on your design. A big difference in the percentage may distort the embroidery. We recommend keeping it plus or minus 15% from 100. In this case, we will increase the size from 100 to 115. To do so, first click on the X icon and press clear before inputting any value. Next, input the desired value. Next, press the Enter key represented by the green arrow. Last, repeat these steps with the Y axis. Keep in mind, if you change the measurements of either axis, you will need to change the measurements of the opposite axis by the same amount to avoid distorting the logo. Last, press OK to save the changes. Next, let's cover part three, how to rotate your design. The Rotate Designs key is represented by the F icon on your Design Set Parameters menu. When you select this key, a variety of options will appear. Select the desired position and press OK. The design on your screen should now appear with the changes you've made. Now let's go over part four, how to select a customized angle for your design. Select the icon with one F and one slanted F to add a specific angle to your design. Once you select this option, a numbered keypad will appear. Select the desired degrees in which you would like to position your design and press Enter. Now press OK. The logo on your screen should now appear in the customized angle you selected. Next, we will cover part five, how to repeat a design. In this section, you will learn how to repeat a design in one job and select the space between repeated designs. With your machine, you can repeat the same design in one job. Embroiderers use this method to save time when running projects such as multiple patches. To do so, you will need to use the largest hoop possible and repeat the logo as many times as it fits into your hoop area. To begin the process, you will have to choose whether you want to repeat your designs vertically or horizontally. To stitch the design horizontally, you will use the third and fourth icon in the first column of your design set menu. In this case, we are embroidering vertically, so we will select the third and fourth icon on the second column of our design set parameters menu. First, we're going to input the number of logos we plan on repeating. So we will select the third icon in the second column. Before inputting a value, press clear, and then input the number of logos you would like to repeat. Now press enter. Next, let's select space in between each of the logos by choosing the fourth icon on the second column. These values will be represented in millimeters. Now input the amount of space you wish to place between your designs. Once you input the measurement, press Enter, and then OK. Your repeated designs will now appear on the screen. Keep in mind that if the hoops are too small for all the designs, the hoop outline will appear in red. If this is the case, please change the hoop selection on your panel. The hoop you're using on the machine should be the same size selected on your panel. In the last part of this video, we will cover part six, 
how to adjust the density of your design. On the bottom left corner, you will find the density selection, which allows you to increase or decrease the density of your design. If you would like to increase the density, tap the area where the number appears and input the desired density values. Density values ranges from one to three, with one being the thinnest and three the thickest. In this case, we're adjusting the density to 1 to increase the density of the design. After inputting the value, press Enter, and then OK. If you would like to decrease the density, select the density key once again. Once selected, input your value. Then, click on the plus slash minus icon to convert to a negative value. Last, select Enter, followed by OK. Keep in mind, this selection will increase the density of the entire logo. Thank you for watching the Design Set Parameters series. In the next video series, Color Sequence Options, we will go over how to select a color sequence and how to adjust the various settings under the Color Sequence menu. Like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful information and tips.